I want to ask Marina you a question about if patients receive osimertinib as first line, then what do you do for second line? Because that's the argument or that's the clinical issue that comes up for our physicians and patients. Yeah, yeah. So we know that uh, there are several mechanisms of resistance that are already known uh, also for uh, osimertinib. And uh, we have some uh, missense mutations also after osimertinib that potentially can be sensitive again to the first and second generation TKI, but uh, this must be proven because uh, the results uh, are very scanty and we have to work uh, at the academic level again. We know also that uh, there are sever several other emerging uh, uh, mechanisms of resistance, such as, for example, the MET uh, amplification, and uh, we can use also chemotherapy for uh, uh, salvage uh, uh, therapy. So I think that again we have to work uh, on the mechanisms of resistance and try to personalize how to follow this kind of patients. Uh, but uh, uh, in a certain way, chemotherapy now represent uh, the continuation uh, of uh, osimertinib. Thank you. No, it, in this sense, uh, Suresh, it will be critical to show the overall survival data. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I can I can reverse the, 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 the your point of view. Uh, it is true that the, the best drug should be used for first. But in this case, if you are using osimertinib first, the, al the alternative choice is only chemotherapy. Because all these CMET inhibitors, the small cell transformation, all these other mechanisms of resistance are not draggable at the moment. Okay? So, in the, in the community practice, but also the academic sense, the only way is to, in addition to put patients into clinical trials, is, is cytotoxic chemotherapy. So in this sense, considering that almost every patient will be crossover to, to osimertinib in the, in the control arm, uh, it will be critical to show some differences in survival. Because at that time you have the evidence that uh, uh, gi giving osimertinib first is it's the best choice. But otherwise, I, I'm speaking for Italy, for Europe in this case. Uh, and I can understand, I easily understand that in the United States the story is totally different. But I still believe that is an ethical solution to administer first or, for me, it's first, but for others it's first or second generation is G4TK, I follow it by osimertin, follow it by chemotherapy. That is my, my personal opinion, but I would like to know what the others sure. think. So we'll wrap up this discussion. We'll maybe quickly get everybody's uh, view on uh, what's the standard approach for EGFR patients moving forward. Giorgio has indicated his preference for still sticking with the current paradigm, first generation, up and then D790. Benjamin, I know you mentioned similar uh, thoughts. Yes, I, I agree with Giorgio. It's first followed by third, but I also fully agree with mine. I, if if you are able to closely follow and, and detect the T790M mutation, and then it's chemo because chemo works in these patients. One word, if you use chemo after first or third generation, don't, don't use any TKI with chemotherapy, it's deleterious. It's the Impress study was, was very clear on that, but it's always good to repeat that if you give chemo, stop the TKI, otherwise you will be deleterious for the patient. And as we said, immunotherapy is probably not the best option. It can be discussed post-chemotherapy, but it's probably the, not the best option. So my opinion is that uh, uh, in 2017 patients must be more involved than uh, before and uh, I think that now patients are coming uh, very informed to our centers. So I think that we can discuss also with the patient uh, if he wants uh, everything from the beginning uh, and having uh, just chemotherapy at the end. Uh, 
and uh, or uh, trying to put uh, all the pieces uh, in the sequence. Uh, and we, ho uh, we have also to tell to the patients uh, that uh, the toxicity of this drug is uh, really uh, low, so he can have uh, really a normal life and uh, to continue to survive, to work and uh, so on. So I think that in the discussion with the patients and considering again the center where you are, you can take a good decision. Sure. And uh, to close up with my own thoughts on this, uh, I would say that uh, the median PFS of 19 months we saw on the FLORA study and the hazard ratio of 0.46 when compared to erlotinib and gefitinib, uh, to me in a highly significant manner, is uh, strong enough for me to consider osimertinib. In fact, when we made the presentation, we made the point that these data support the notion that osimertinib should be a new standard of care in the frontline space and uh, the survival hazard ratio was 0 0.63. Uh, it did not meet the statistical significance by the interim analysis standards, but it was still p-value of 0 0.0068. We also saw two-fold improvement in the duration of response for patients treated with osimertinib. So uh, I think this is something that, uh, taken on top of the favorable tolerability of osimertinib compared to the other agents, uh, will, makes a compelling case for using it in the frontline setting. Uh, for my patients. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll continue to discuss this topic moving forward, and uh, uh, it's uh, indeed a new phase or new beginning, as we said, for patients with EGFR mutation, positive lung cancer. More options is good.